Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me on this Thursday evening. My name's Heather. I'm a songbird stamper. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator from the Ferrum in the United Kingdom. And uh, yeah, we're going live on a Thursday night, which is fabulous fun. Um, although I'm tired tonight. Not, um, not through work this time, through fun. I've had a lovely day out visiting um, friends, crafty friends. Um, who are in Somerset, I think. But yeah, so a bit of a drive, a bit of a drive there, a bit of a drive back, but traffic was good. Um, so I'm here to show you, um, kind of finishing off how to make this gorgeous mini album. So I'll show you the mini album that we made last week. If you haven't seen how to make this, the video is up on YouTube. So you can see how I made the actual kind of base of the mini album. And I thought we'd just have a play around with some stamp sets really. So nothing kind of outrageous today, nothing, kind of mind-blowing, but I've got a lot of stamp sets on my desk um, because we didn't really get around to decorating this last time. So I've got a lot of stamp sets on my desk and um, we'll just have a bit of a play. So if you're if you're watching live, please do drop us a comment. It'd be nice to see who's on. So this is, this is the decoration we did yesterday. It's not stuck on straight. And um, I can only apologise to whoever gets this. But, you know, such is life. These are some just extras that we had left over. And then you've got tags in the pockets. So quite fun. Quite fun little. Hello, Louise. How are you? How are you doing? It's not been quite as hot today, is it? Which is good. Good. Oh, it still feels a bit muggy. I don't know whether we're due a, a storm. So yeah, I thought we'd just get kind of get cracking really and get playing. I've got some black card, some white card, and um, I, I don't know what I'm doing as much as, as you don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so it's a bit, uh, it's a bit hit and miss, but sometimes that's a nice way to be, isn't it? So I'm going to have a look at this panel here and um, some I'm going to decorate, some I'm not going to decorate. Um, we'll just, we'll just play it by ear, I think. So let's have a go at the tag, actually, I think. Oh, I've had a lovely day. I really have had a lovely day. Yeah, just absolutely, I mean, absolutely exhausting. I came home and just crashed out on the sofa, if I'm completely honest. Um, Russ got in about half an hour after I did. And um, he had to really work hard to get me away to cook some dinner with him. And yeah, that was not easy. So kind of measurement wise, I'm just doing this a bit old school, really. Ah, oh, hey, Louise. Oh, thank you. I'm hope, I hope I live up to your expectations if you're looking forward to it, bless you. I just got in from the pool. I really need to go. I really need to go to the gym. I have not been at all this week. I do like a swim. I do like a swim. So yeah, I'm just doing this kind of measurement old school, just with a pencil and... Um, a trimmer. Sometimes the old school methods are the best. I'll say that until it doesn't work and then um there we go. So that's gonna be our tag. And I've got loads of stamp sets, but I thought this might be quite nice. So I'm gonna have a go at this, which I haven't really made a great deal of use of this dragonfly garden stamp set. I thought that might look quite cool stamped in black. And then the little butterf the little dragonflies, I think this might be just the right size, this big one. I just don't know if it's gonna look good or not. We might just go for this and a sentiment. Like I say, absolutely winging it today, but Sometimes it's good for you guys to be able to see the creative process as well. Let's go for that top there. I was talking to somebody recently about size of blocks, and they say try not to use a size of block that's too big for your stamp, but neither do you want to use one that's too small. Can you see where I've got that lined up? And it's a it's just poking over the edge, which is not necessarily a massive problem. You can't kind of get a judge on where the edge of the stamp is. So 
Um, you can't really tell. It's been worse if it's a sentiment as well because you can't really tell if it's straight or not. So you need to use a blog that's not block that's not too big, but also one that's not too small for your stamp. And I like to have a, a clear outline all the way around my stamp so that I can see where I'm stamping. I'm just going to bring this camera towards me a little bit because it's a bit more of a comfortable working position. Well, it's not entirely straight. Let's go there. Cool. So I've got some memento black ink. Um, I might, might work with various mediums tonight, but I'm just going to start off with basic memento, which means if I want to colour it, it's going to have to be alcohol markers. And I'm just going to stamp this. Notice I'm doing it before I've stuck it onto my tag, because if I mess it up, then it's not the end of the world. We can just cut another piece of card. Oh, hey, Carol. How are you doing? Nice to see you, or virtually see you anyway. I hope I get to see you next Friday. I've got Cupper and Card at Emsworth next Friday, so if anybody wants to come along, um, more than welcome. I've got plenty of space. I haven't prepped the packs yet either, so um, give me a, drop me a shout, shout me a, shout me a, drop me a line. That's what they say, isn't it? Drop me a line. Let me know you want to come in Emsworth, in Hampshire. Right, so we've got these cute dragonflies, which I thought I might just stamp on over here. And I ought really to clean these stamps as I go tonight because we are going to end up with a lot of stamps out on the desk. I'm just going to put that topper somewhere safe on my computer. That needs a wet, really. Let me just spritz it with some water. I'll get organised in a minute. Right, that's going to go in here. A bit more memento. Let me just pop those dragonflies on. So, colour-wise, colour-wise, what should we add? Let's just add a little bit, because I think it needs a bit of colour. I think. 100% sure. Could leave it black and white and then just go for a coloured dragonfly. And we can mix and match all these sentiments as well. So have we got anything on here we want? Thanks for kindness, make a good all things good. These are kind of birthday. You are inspiration for a true friend. That's quite cute. Let's stamp one of those and cut it out and see what we think. So that could go. It looks quite nice just in black and white, doesn't it? Oh, I don't like that. So let's stamp one of these. There's two dragonflies. I tend to use I tend to use this one way more than I use this one. Come on, camera. So there's your two options. I was down at the pond. Oh, well, it's got the lakes, the Swanwick Lakes recently. And, um, oh, it's gorgeous down there. And I just sat by the big lake watching the dragonflies and the ducks. I haven't felt, felt so peaceful in an awfully long time. Ah, oh, another Carol. Hey, from Connecticut. Thank you for all coming on and joining us, Carol. What was your, we just, um, we were talking a bit about the weather. What's your weather been like? It's a very British thing to talk about the weather. I don't know if it's a kind of human thing to talk about the weather, actually. Um, what colour? So dragonflies are kind of greeny, bluey. Let's have a look in our blends and see what we get. I think we might just do kind of balmy blue. Um, a colour lifter, because they've got almost transparent wings. Very hot. Yeah, do you know, I, I, we've been really hot as well, and just so dry. And um, I must admit, I'm the kind of gardener that if it can't survive naturally, it's probably not going to survive. And all my hydrangeas are dead, for want of a better word. Yeah, the flowers have all gone brown and 
I um, haven't been really looking after them. They're all in the bed, so I'm hoping they'll be okay and kind of come back next year. No idea. We'll wait and see. But, um, real shame. That garden definitely needs to water. I'm surprised we've not been put on a hose pipe ban, if I'm completely honest. I remember those from years, a couple of years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I think, the last hose pipe ban. So can you see I'm just colouring this um, blue and then out to white? Ah, lovely. You'll be there, Carol. Fab. And I'm just going to use my colour lifter. I teach all about this on the blends course, not to plug it too much, but I'm, um, I teach how to use the stamping blends. So if you've got some and you don't know what you're doing with them, it's virtual class worldwide. Be fab to have you um, join us. All the details on my website, um, the songbestamper.co.uk. It's just really a lot of people get the blends and they're like, oh no, I don't really know what to do with them. So I like kind of helping people in their colouring journey. Don't tempt food. <laughs> no, I know. Well, I love this weather as well, Louise, but you know, I don't want it to rain. Certainly not tomorrow. We're going down to Devon tomorrow to see it for the day to see Russell's family. And I have got a little bit of a pool, got a swimming pool. So I'm very much looking forward to maybe being able to make use of that. Right, so this one comes with a punch. And I'm just going to punch them out. I might just need to trim a little bit off the bottom. What I quite like about this weather though is that you get that kind of build up of heat in the day, during the day. It's lovely days and then in the evening you kind of get that rain and um, kind of clears everything out, which is lovely. I don't mind that at all. Let's see what this looks like. It feels like it needs a bit of green. So let's... Um, Let's try adding a little bit of green to this. Let's get some pear pizzazz. Oh, we haven't got a pear pizzazz blend, have we? Hey, Anne Marie. Nice to see you. So, with your blends, we don't have all of the colours. But the light old olive kind of looks pear pizzazz I mean, I could go granny apple green because that's a really nice green too. I'm just going to go for a little bit of this and I hope this works because I just kind of want to add not too accurately just kind of a hint of You see, I'm really, I'm doing this really roughly. I don't know if you can see actually. Is my camera behaving tonight? Need to invest in some lighting. I think it might be a upcoming well birthday. Birthday's a bit late actually for lighting. Birthday's in November. Um, just adding a little bit of. really rough I wouldn't I don't normally color like that and I might do a little bit of yellow for the flowers actually that just just gives it a bit of something I think so let's go um let's go daffodil delight and I'm just going to use the light the dark is quite dark and I just don't feel like we need that oh uh, thanks Carol just feel like we need a bit of and I'm kind of embracing the sketchy look I mean that's quite similar to the green to be honest hopefully it's just different enough And then I think we'll just add a sentiment down this bottom right. 
and that's going to go on there like that. Now, the only problem with putting a dragonfly on here um, is it's going to be a pocket. It's going to go in the pocket, so his wings might get caught. Should be okay coming out. It's just when people put it back in, you might need to... Um, might be a bit zoomy inny outy today, just so you can see the best, the best thing. So I think I'm just going to go and see if this for a true friend will fit in the oval punch. Yeah, that's just going to fit nicely in that little oval punch. So. Stamp it on here. And go down there like that. And I might just sponge the edges with a little bit of black. I'm ready to think what my desk is going to look like after this. So we're down to Devon tomorrow, and then I've got a stamp camp happening on Saturday. So I might have to just spend some time cleaning up my desk afterwards. I'm looking for a black dauber, but they all look kind of black to be honest. It's not, I don't know if I've got a black one. I might have to go old school and just use a little bit of this sponge. Let's see if we can make this work. And what this does is where the white um, card is on the white, it just brings it out a little bit. And it means that you don't need to have a kind of mat. Sometimes you might put a mat round. By mat, I mean a, um, what do you call that shape? Oval that's just slightly bigger than the one that you've stamped on in white. Um, and you might have one row around the edge in, in black. And also what it means is, can you see where the sentiment was quite small in the centre of the um, oval? Just sponging it fills up some of that bed space a little bit. So that can just sit on there. And then we'll pop all that together. Love using um, kind of all your different sets on one project. It's quite fun. And again, you could put this on dimensionals if you were making a card, but because we're making a mini album, um, I'm actually just going to pop it straight down. So you can see how that really kind of stands out a lot more than it did just white on white. It's a really nice technique. And again, on the dragonflies, very normally I would just put glue down the center because I want the wings to lift up. I'm actually going to glue some of the wings down as well, just so that it sticks down a little bit better than otherwise, just because it's going into a... Oh, hey, Anita. Hey, Claire. So that's going to fit straight into our pocket. Just like that. It is a little bit cooler now. I ought to open the window, actually. Yeah, that's better. It's really muggy in here. So you can see how the wings just, you just need to make sure the wings go in side when you do this. Now I am going to pop a little hippo. Um, 
I'm really struggling with my words. These are not hippos, they are elephants. And I'm just going to pop a little elephant in this corner. I'm not going to do a full panel, but I didn't want to leave it blank either. So I'm just going to stamp him. Him or her? What do you reckon? At work again, bless you. Bless you. Hopefully you've had some time off. I'm sure you have. Nobody works all the time. But sadly, not on a Thursday night. So I'm gonna put the I'm just gonna try and tidy up as I go. Normally I would not bother, but I'm conscious that I'm using so much stuff. Her, you think it's a her elephant? Could could colour it in pink. Should we have a pink elephant? I've been doing them all grey all the time. Oh, you've got a couple of seconds. Pink or grey for this little elephant. I could do grey ears and then a pink. Like a flirty flamingo, a bright pink. What do we reckon? And I might stamp the balloon as well, actually. Just because. Why would you not? Oh, lovely Carol. I thought you um, you might like that technique. Just adding that little sponging round. I say we've got daubers, um, which are great for it, but old school just a little bit of sponge and you could even use tissue paper if you don't have anything like that actually just use a little bit of tissue paper too right none of you have come on i'm wondering whether the comments are a little bit um delayed but i'm going for a pink elephant i'm gonna do it i think it'll just stand out a bit better on that black background. Uh, finishing soon, that's always good, always good. I had a phone call today from my boss um, asking me if I remembered, and I don't actually think I was working, I think it was after I'd handed over to somebody, uh, if I remembered an incident that had happened in the harbour um, on the 17th of June. And I was like, you know what? I don't even remember what happened to you yesterday, let alone what happened over a month ago. <laughs> over a month ago. I was like, I'm ever so sorry. I honestly don't recall anything. I say, I think it was actually after I'd handed over, after I'd finished work. But it was just quite funny how he had any thought that I might remember what had happened. When, yeah, I can't even remember what I had for tea yesterday. <laughs> right, let's add a little bit of um, dark just around the edges and on the edge of his trunk. Or oh, her is quite clearly a her elephant now. I've done a bright pink. Get a little bit of grey because I think grey ears might be quite nice. A little bit of dark coming out there actually just to emulate them. Okay, kind of coming out from the body. And you're all probably thinking, what are you doing with that elephant? Okay, so we're going to go Daffodil Delight on this balloon. So I've got light and dark. Colouring circular objects is hard. And it's one of the things we do cover on the course is shape. Colouring in different shapes because it's 
it can be really key to getting that 3D look. But it is one of the more difficult things to do. So we've already kind of got that shape a little bit, so it's lightest in that little top bit up there. And then I'm just going to go in with the colour lifter and just add a little bit of a highlight at the top of the balloon there. Go for some just a really basic, I think, light smoky slate. I might regret doing that. No, looks okay. I think I might just add a little bit of the color lifter just to soften that up a little bit. Lovely. So cute. And then there are dies. I don't even remember if I've got them. So I'm just gonna fussy cut it. I have got I have got the die cut machine out, so um I have got it in case we need it. Just a quick word as well, um, if the sound goes at any point, um, try logging out and then just coming straight back into the YouTube channel. We had a bit of a problem last time and um, I know it's not the first time or the first person that this has happened to. So if, if the sound goes, just hop on out and then come back in again. Okay. So it really does stand out that against the um, background. And let's just pop a little bit of grey on the tail, I think, as well. What have you all got planned for the weekend then? Anything nice? I've got stamp camp on Saturday and then family barbecue on Sunday. So again, hoping for a little bit more sunshine. Hey Google, turn the lights on. We have automatic lighting here, which is actually really handy if I don't want to get up very very lazy um but actually really quite handy <laughs> just the lamps he couldn't resist putting them all on smart smart plugs and the fan he, he put the fan on a smart plug as well it's terrible isn't it uh chilling out i don't blame you Anne marie i don't blame you I'm on um, a bit of holiday from work at the moment, which is fab. A bit of time off, and um, yeah, I'm not very good at the old chilling. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm having a great time, but I'm kind of packing, packing it all in. I feel like it makes me feel like I've had uh, more time off. Right, so do I put him? Do I put her rather on a circle? A little circle die. I might do that actually just in the corner. So we've got the I'll show you how to kind of have it coming off the corner. Silas shapes. Love these. These are my go-to shape dies. And I think we'll go for the big one because what I'm going to do is just have it come in off the corner. So I'm going to show you how to do that. 
So just cut the card. Yeah, so I've got um, online classes with the lovely Emma Goddard as well, but I'm going to miss tomorrow, sadly, because Ross has other ideas and wants to go to Devon, which is a bit sad. So I might try and make the cards up. I'll make a start on um, Saturday, go time. Ready for Saturday evening. Crafty stash. Oh, yes, it is. Crafty stash at the, at the makers on Saturday. Oh, gosh, bless you. And then back to Christmas crafting on Sunday. <laughs> oh. I meant to drop some stuff off. I know she's going to do another one. I just haven't. So much, Louise, that I haven't quite got round to. All the best intention. And um, I'm not going to get a chance tomorrow. So this is going to go. I want this like this. But I don't want all of it so what we're going to do because it's a circle it doesn't matter where you make that initial cut just cut anywhere and then just line that up against there and cut that one there as well and then you've got a perfect right angle that you can pop in the corner of your project and that's going to go Something like that. I might just sponge a little bit of ink onto the background of that one. So I've got my grey Slate stamp pad. Oh, have fun at the D-stash. You're supposed to be getting rid of more than you um, donated though, Louise. Don't forget that, yeah? <laughs> Let's be getting rid of it. It's called a D stash, not a resupply. But also buy lots because it supports a great cause. So let's just pick up some of that ink. I love a bit of sponging. What do we think? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's going, to be honest, but I think it's just going to go. Let's put it on. Let's put it on and see what we think. think i've also got some pink pink sequins somewhere where's my sequins for everything gone Ooh. a pink glittery box of loveliness um now like i said you don't want anything dimensional wise that's going to um Kind of raise it up and make it too bulky in here, but these pink sequins, pink sink sequins are fine, I think. I'm not sure about that grey sponging, if I'm completely honest. Not convinced by that at all. So I might just cut another one, make it a bit smaller. And then do it plain with some sequins. I might actually just cut the smaller one. Yeah, I think we'll just cut the smaller one. I think that was a bit big, so I felt like it was a bit empty and I felt I had to do something with it. And actually, I didn't like it. Again, I'm going to trim it. I'm just going to bring the trimmer in and just trim 
a little bit off there and then a little bit off that side to create a right angle and then you can put your elephant on I think that looks better yeah so let's stick that down I think it's just got blocked up where I've had the lid off. Okay. And then just line that up with the corner. Pop your little Nelly down. And then the balloon can just come off to the side, I think. Oh, hey, Joanna. Nice to virtually see you. We're just having a bit of a, a play around with lots of different stamps and dyes this evening um, to um, decorate the mini album that, I, that we made last week. So if you didn't, I know you were here last week, Joanna, but if people didn't see mini album being made you can pop back I might just pop these sequins on you can never have too many sequins right you can pop back to the video and um, watch at your leisure and see how I made it I hope you've had a good week everybody I hope you've had a nice Nice time, nice weeks. They go so quick, so quickly, don't they? Let's get rid of these bits and bobs. I'll try and keep tidy as we go. Right, so there's our little elephant. And I don't really think I'm gonna do an awful lot more to that. So our first page is that and then that's the little tag that we decorated on the inside of that. Now you can absolutely put photos and things like in this. This is not going to be, I didn't, I don't really know why I'm making this or who I'm making it for. Um, I might even, I might do a giveaway. So um, I wanted to kind of make it um, universal. And it's just going to contain messages of like encouragement and support and things like that. So, oops, my last this one's got stuck. Come on, oh dear. Oops, there we go. Freed him. Set him free. So we're onto this spread here, which is the middle page. I thought I might bring a bit more of that rose gold foil in. And that is the perfect height. So we could do like a big image in the middle. I've got these ones, which are quite nice, but they're quite big. So we might just do something like that. Let me clear up the elephants. Oh, the elephant is cute. We decided that one was a she today, hence why it's pink, Joanna. It's a she elephant. They are adorable. Have you got them? Love them. Their little mouse is so cute as well. So cute. Quite funny it was quite funny we did a scavenger hunt for my customers to say thank you very much for, for kind of sticking with me and coming back to me after i left jumping up and rejoined and um when i got to bronze elite and i did a how many uh, uh, animals are in this stamp set how many images of animals so i'll hold it there for a second and shout your answers out because i'm i'm intrigued 
I don't think anybody really agreed with me. How many animal stamps are in that set? Okay. See what see what you think. We'll have a little debate in a minute. So what I'm going to do is bring out um, the borders. I've got some basic borders dies, which I thought might be quite cool. Or the Eden dies. Let's have a look. Basic borders and Eden dies. Yeah, Louise, that's what everybody else said. Four. Every, nearly everybody said four. Anybody else? Any more for any more before we have a discussion? Um, so I've got, oh, that's quite nice. I mean, this is like, it looks like sky. Five, Louise. Yeah, yeah. That's what I went with. <laughs> this likes clouds. It looks like clouds a lot. Um, and I just don't know that it's going to look right down the sides. I might just go boring and basic and go for that. Yeah, butterfly is an animal, even though it's an insect. This is exactly the discussion we had. An insect is still an animal. It's not a mammal, but it's an animal. That's what Sir David Attenborough says anyway. And I believe him, because I think he knows what he's talking about. But yeah, so it's still an animal. It's just not a mammal. Yeah, you've got to include the butterfly. But it was a very good, it was a very heated debate. <laughs> A heated debate, <laughs> short-lived because I refused to take any prisoners. <laughs> yeah, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fascinating, fascinating. I thought it was really interesting that nearly everybody went for. Or do we go zigzag? Oh, actually, let's let's have a zigzag, shall we? All right, let's go. Let's just make a decision um, because the Eden dies are quite pretty as well. So yeah, you're in great company, Louise. You, I just, I've hardly used these dies. I don't think, I'm not even convinced I have used these dies. So maybe we ought to use this. Aren't that pretty? They're gorgeous. Right, let's go for these. Let's put that one back and let's use these ones because they're lovely. So let's just cut a strip. But yes, I made for an interesting, interesting 10 minutes on our um, Zoom chat. Because I thought I was going to get lynched. I'm glad I was doing it by Zoom, not by um, in face to face. <laughs> if I'm completely honest. Right, let's go for those two. Oh. I hope you can see what I'm doing. So I'm basically just trimming two bits of this gold. And I've chosen the matte foil. Two bits of the matte gold. Um, like roughly the same size as this. And then I'm going to run it through the die cut machine. So that the left hand edge. I'm going to try and run it through so the left hand edge is straight. Against the edge of the die. Just because that's then going to give me a, a better um, cut. I won't have to then straighten it up afterwards. Um, I probably should use a little bit of low tack tape just to try and hold that in place. Yeah, no, Carol, absolutely. You, you, you're in good company with four, but I, I don't think it's right because um, a butterfly is still an animal. It's just not a mammal. Right, let's. Grab some tape because I don't trust myself to um, line this up. So if you if you put your dies through the machine and you think they're going to move, this is magic tape, Scotch removable magic tape. Um, I'm hoping it's going to work on um, and that's just going to hold it in place straight while we pop it through the machine. I hope it's going to work on foil was what I was trying to say, but I'm struggling with my words today. Now I use my mini so much. 
because so many of the dyes work with it. Look how well that's cut as well. I don't think you get that with many of the other die cut machines, the little ones. Now we should have a nice straight edge with a gorgeous pattern that we can just pop straight down. And it's got that stitching as well that we can pop straight down the edge of those. Mini, uh, the mini is fab, isn't it, Louise? Yeah. It's so much easier to work with than the big one. And it just cut, I mean, most of the dye, I would say most of the dyes that we've got, it cuts. It cuts the big circle on the shapes one that I've been using. So again, just a little bit of tape on there and it just helps. I don't often use tape, but sometimes you just think, actually, just for the sake of a couple of minutes, I think it was not even that, is it? 30 seconds to put a little bit of tape on can make all the difference. One cut and that's all that needs. It's gone straight through. Beautiful. Okay. So poke out the couple of last remaining bits. Use a pokey tool if you need to. All that happens, why that happens, they get stuck sometimes, is if you haven't cleaned the dye out in between uses, like I didn't. Um, I didn't poke all these bits out, so it can cause it to get a bit stuck sometimes. Let's take that bit of tape off. So, can you see the, these, pro these projects are not quick. We've been here for five minutes but they're a labor of love and a gift that you're going to give somebody that hopefully they're going to treasure forever um i made one i hope janette still got it i made one for her when she moved away i asked morris uh, her husband for some photos um of her time in the village and when we when she moved I made her a mini album of kind of photos of us together but also just photos of her and and um and her time Oh, so sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. So that's going to go down one side and that's going to go down the other side. But I didn't think the fact that it's got a thumb hole in it. So I'm just going to put it on and then I'm going to punch the thumb hole out, I think. I don't know if it'll look right, but there we go. We're going for it. Um, glue can sometimes affect the back of foil, but when you've got intricate bits like this I don't really know how else you can do it but if you put glue on your foil and notice it just raises bumps it slightly um you might want to try tape runner or red tape or something next time and I would normally if I was using foil use the red tape but I, what I don't want is for these bits to be loose I want them stuck down as well. So there's our one side. And then we'll go for our other side. Just because I think it looks nice. I think it needs both sides. But I'm going to have to then decide what to do about this. Oh. Just put that on there and then just turn that over and see. Okay. So it turns out not I mean not only am I not very good with my words late at night, I'm not very good at making decisions either. <laughs> Let's pop a bit of that on there. And then that can go. Let's just take that out for a sec. Just in case it goes, oh, it's going to get glue on there as well. Um, mm -mm. A little bit of, be careful. So, say if you're going to take your time, just put a little bit of copy paper in that gap between the two pages because it's got glue, and what you don't want is to stick that onto here because you've got glue on there. But I'm just going to be careful.
Okay, I'm going to go for it because I think it needs that hole. I'm just going to grab the circle punch that I used last week, um, which was one inch, I think. And you can just easily line that up. I don't know if you can see because the lighting's not great, but what I'm doing is lining that up with where it was last week and punching. There we go. That looks okay, doesn't it? And then we can put our little tab back in here. And there's our pocket. That looks fine. So I think I want one of these and maybe this one and then this sentiment. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. Like you see, I've been really lazy. I haven't even made this whole stamp set up yet. Yeah, no worries, Anne-Marie. We've only got another 10 minutes, but um, you get off and get yourself some rest. And then um, we'll, we'll video will always be here on catch up. And then... I don't know. I might finish it. I don't think I'll do this again next week. You guys might not come back if I just make the same mistake. Say, make the same uh, project three weeks in a row. You want to see something new, but um, it should be something to finish up, maybe at some point. Right. So let's grab that. I'm kind of thinking along those lines so but obviously this is going to go over the join so whatever we're going to do we're going to need to cut it so i think we'll cut a little piece of card not to the size of the stamp but um, a little bit bigger okay That's going to go about there, I think. And about there. So can you see that whatever, well, it's a bit big actually, whatever we do, we're going to need to just trim that down um, to go across the join. But that's fine. I can show you how to do that. And we might put a bit of um, blending, I think. So I've got the Barmy Blue um, stamp pad. We might do a little bit of masking, actually. So we're going to work on this one. Yep, we're going to work on this one. I'm going to grab some masking paper. You haven't seen me using this yet it's a fabulous product and it's like a giant post-it notes i'm not convinced that's going to be big enough oh not quite so let me grab a new sheet i mean it might be but i don't want to risk it while i'm doing it live with you guys so let's just grab a new sheet and you get uh 12 sheets in a pack and it's great so what we're going to do is grab our stamp and pop this down on the masking paper and I'm just going to cut out the lady and the pillows So not the window, um, not the shelf, just going to cut round the lady and those cushions there. And you haven't got to be kind of too accurate. It's just basically what we're going to do is um, blend some balmy blue ink. And we don't want her to end up balmy blue because we're going to colour her in. So 
if she's kind of blue underneath, it's going to be a bit of a problem getting the right colours. It used to be that you used to have to do this on post-it notes. And A, they were a little bit thicker than this and had a bit of a ridge. And B, they only had a sticky bit on one edge. So you'd be kind of working away and the rest of it would, would lift up. So that's our little lady. We've got her. And then... We're going to stamp this as straight as we can onto our piece of card there and then with the masking paper all you're going to do is try and peel off the backing that might be easier said than done there's a join on the paper uh, wherever the piece of paper wherever the masking paper is there's a kind of a split halfway down on the back so oh, i've just i have got it so that's where you can kind of start to peel away from oh no because it would have been on the top of here. So I'm just going to try and get my fingernail in there like that. Look. Pull that off. Now just get rid of a bit of the tackiness. It's quite sticky, which is a good thing, but um, it might be a bit too sticky sometimes. So I'm just using the kind of oils and residues on my finger to get rid of a bit of that tackiness so that when I stick this down, over here, grab my blue and my barley blue in. And just blending. A little bit of a background Onto there, you can barely see it, but um, I, I can definitely see it. I don't want to go too dark. And then when you lift this masking paper off, can you see now you've got this lovely white image underneath? You can definitely see that blue now, yeah? So you've got the lovely white image where you can now colour. Love that technique, it's brilliant. So I'm going to go in with the bronze, I think. And I'm just going to do the window pane. Now, brown over blue, it's okay. I didn't need to cut away all of that out of masking paper. And then we'll go for a little bit of bronze on here. I'm going to show you how to kind of change that up a little bit and imagine she's sitting on a kind of window ledge um, and we need the colour lifter and what we're going to do is just kind of create some texture in that window ledge that she sat on. I'm going to go ivory for the skin. I'm going to keep the colouring on this quite straightforward. So we'll just go for some ivory. It's just a basic um, kind of Caucasian skin tone. And bronze would be a darker skin tone. 
But um, I've already used the bronze on the the window ledge, and I'm just trying to get some shading just by using the layering of that one marker. Okay, so let's go for some kind of blonde hair, I don't know, yellow. I do you have just yellow hair. I might add some just a light, actually, it's quite nice. Adding a little bit of dark um, daffodil delight underneath. Where the kind of band is, she's got a bit of a band around her hair. I don't know what you can see in this light, to be honest. Cushion wise, what kind of cushions? What kind of top? You can absolutely do paper piecing here as well. I might go for an orchid oasis on her bottoms. So light orchid oasis and dark orchid oasis. I think that'll go with the balmy blue quite well. And I like jeans that she's got on, so. I had a pair of trousers that colour. Beautiful purple. Changing that light. I don't know how you're working in this light. That's a little bit better, isn't it? And what colour top? Should we do a nice bright polished pink top? Should we just go way out there? Dark polished pink and light polished pink. Again, dark, I'm just popping on the kind of artist lines and where I think the shading will be. So you can see I've absolutely gravitated to my normal alcohol markers tonight. I really do need to break out some other colouring mediums soon. I've got a class in water colouring coming up. Actually, I've got a couple of classes in water colouring coming up. One on Monday and one in August as well, which will be super cool. Can't wait for those. And then just the cushions, and I might actually just match the cushions to her top and do this one. In polished pink. Ooh. 
my blender definitely my go-to colouring tool. I've been I did use the watercolour pencils a little bit recently. That was quite fun. So we just need one more uh, pillow colour, and then her mark can be grey, I think. I don't know what colour to do. I might do a grey blend down there as well. Like with here. Uh, just to tie that in. So we've got light smoky slate, dark smoky slate. Oops, excuse me. Sorry, computer. And then we will add just a little bit of um, smoky slate blend. So I had the blending brush out earlier. So that's that one there. I'm just going to put um, a little bit of kind of scratch paper. Just over there like that. It's going to mean you get a harsh line, which you might not want. Um, but I didn't want the colour coming up over my colouring. And then because I didn't cut away that tiny little bit. I've got no ink, so I'm just going to add a little bit there. Right, okay, one more colour to choose. And we could go, um, what should we go? Hmm. Oh gosh, struggling, what colour should we, I'm thinking another bright colour. Green, granite for green cushion, that looks quite cool, wouldn't it? Oh gosh, that dried completely out. No good. And then she can have a green belt as well, just to tie that together. And one final thing to do is to add A little bit of polished pink to her arm because I didn't colour that. I think that's her sleeve coming down here. There we go. So, move the blends out of the way, bring the project back in, and then we've got this. Got a bit out of kilter, I must have knocked something. There we go. So we've got this, um, but obviously this is not going to fit. And I don't know if I just want to crease it. I feel like I actually want to cut it. So I'm going to cut it down the middle and then stick the two halves on. And we're going to see what we think it looks like. And I hope it doesn't look awful now that I've done all that. So what I'm going to do is choose down the kind of centre line of the window pane. Can you see? So I've just chopped it down the centre line of the window pane. I just don't think you should be constrained. But that just is going to give us that bend that we need. So we're going to stick one half on. I don't think you should be constrained by the image doesn't fit directly on the page. There's no reason you can't go over the page. 
You might completely disagree with me and think that's a terrible idea, and that's okay. Life would be boring if we were all on the same wavelength all the time. Okay, so then put this half on. When you use glue, I know some people struggle with Tombow, always keep the nozzle in contact with the paper. And then you want to line that up. So that it still closes. Okay, so there's half. And then you're just going to put the other half on there. And like I say, you might look at it and think, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I might look at it and think, oh, that's terrible. Um, but I want that image kind of going all the way across. Okay. And it closes nicely still. I think that's the problem. If you had them um, kind of without that join in, they just wouldn't, it wouldn't close nicely. And then that just a simple sentiment is going to go um, down there. Now I've got um, a lovely, oh, I thought I had just the right shape. But what I have got, we're going to try, before I quickly sign off, because it's 10 past 11, is this new punch. So um, I know I've been quite upset that there's not been a, a tag topper punch in the new catalogue. But I think this punch is what's supposed to kind of take the tag topper punch's place. So what I'm going to do is stamp this on, okay, and then cut this to size with my trimmer. Actually a bit skewy, so let's cut. Oh, I might have made it too. Let's try. Yeah, that's just going to cut off my. It's going to cut off my thing. So, let's try cutting it to size first. So roughly, what size have we got? Six, five, four and a half. Four and a half. Let's see. What we're going to do is relax. It looks like it should fit. So, what we're going to try and do, and I've not done this yet, is turn this into a kind of tag. So, that's one corner, and then we're going to flip it and do the other corner, and then you get a nice even. And then punch it again, that tied, like that. And so can you see that would be the top of your tag? And you can have that whatever width you wanted to then. And actually, that's quite nice. So one, and then flip it, and punch the other side. And that creates that lovely shape. which again, you can sponge to add some um, ink to, to kind of bring it up. And I might do that with the balmy blue again, just around the edges. So we've got our sentiment here and hopefully that's just gonna fit nicely in the middle. Gorgeous. I love it. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. And I think that's so true. 
that's just going to go down there like that and we are just going to use a little bit of that balmy blue ink and I'll see if I can find a dauber. Really good for when you want to try and keep the layers to a minimum as well. Right, so we're about there, about at the end of the uh, end of the show, guys. So thank you so much for just kind of stopping by and spending your evening with me, and um, it really makes it worth all the worthwhile doing these. And I know you guys are watching and, and learning and kind of getting something out of it. So thank you and. Um, I hope you like this project. I hope you give it a go. If you haven't seen how the actual album is made, head back over onto um, YouTube and find the video. Love that, just with that little bit of sponging around. And if you're interested in, this, in the blends course, do give me a shout. So it's £70 for the four weeks, uh, for the four classes. You get like 12 hours of content and a full written course, guys. Uh, to learn how to use your stamping blend markers or if you haven't got any and you want to know kind of how to use them then uh, 180 pounds gets you all the product all the stamp sets and all the blends as well and um it's yeah it's going to be good it's going to be fun i know it is ah thanks louise thank you for thank you for hopping on i was hoping you all hadn't fallen asleep there at the end it got a bit quiet me just chatting away to myself <laughs> love seeing this hope to see the finished project sometime yeah, me too, Louise. I'm I'm very good at not finishing things, so I must try and get this done because I think it would make a nice little gift for someone. So, what do you reckon to that chopping it in half? Do you think it works? I just think it needs it. So, what have we done today? Not a lot by the looks of it, but it just shows how long things take. We've um, created a little tag, a little elephant and um, created that spread in the centre there. Thank you, Shaz. No, I really, really appreciate that. This might look nice with the little birds, some little birds flying actually as well. I might do that quickly before we go. Don't want to ruin it, but um, I think that might just look quite nice. <laughs> in one of these sets, I think it was in the herons, there's some good birds. Yeah, this one, which is um, one of the other ones I pulled out to use. Oh, thanks, Louise. It makes me feel good. You doubt yourself sometimes. You think, does it work? Does it not work? But it just means that you can get that image on there. Um, we'll go for Barbie Blue just because that's what we've used. I just her watching, sitting, looking out the window. I think that's quite nice. Stamped off. Maybe both. Maybe one there. There. Just watching the birds. Ah, oh, hey Shirley. Nice to see you before I disappear. Right, so that's our spread um, for today. A couple of bits done and um, we'll pop that back together and I'll try and get that finished and take a picture of it and show you guys the finished result. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for staying with us. It's about 20 past nine, wowzers. Um, I will see you all, should see you next Thursday. Yeah, I should be here. I'm not very good at looking ahead to see what's happening, but I'm not working. I've got some time off. So I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday for some more crafty fun. Thanks, guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye for now. Bye.